have a question, just un unmute your mic and and talk because I've got everybody. I'm gonna mute everybody just in case somebody comes in, you know, with a dog barking or something. Anyway, I want to show you these two pictures that I did. I was explaining something. Oh, really? How can it do that? Because I pulled it up in the last class. Show in folder. No. Come on. Well, I guess this computer is not like every computer on campus. Well, anyway. Well, this makes me mad. I pulled it up in the last class without any problems. Why is all of a sudden? Whatever. OK, for those of you and I know I shouldn't be talking about this the second week of class. This is stuff that we should have talked about the first week of class. But I'm doing it with all my students because last night or yesterday afternoon and last night I had a couple of people that were having problems. So I just wrote this down with my document cam and I took a picture of it and I put it on, you know, so I thought I'd go over it with everybody. First of all, if you're having problems with your password, then the first thing you should try is you should try to use your T number for the password. Sometimes my lab plus will go back to the T number will default to the T number whenever there's there's password issues. OK, that's one thing. The second thing that you could do is change your password through forgot my password. Uh, right up under the login uh, blocks, you'll see a link that says forgot your password. If they don't send you an email back in a timely flash fashion, say like within the hour, if you don't get an email back about your password in an hour, then I would just email uh, Dr. Anzer and Miss Ward, email them both. And for some reason, I don't have a there. OK. Uh, Miss Ward, email them both and email them your full name, the T number. And this is 110. I don't know what this is. 110 dash 12. Somebody, anybody know it? Anybody know the section number? I don't have it in front of me, so I don't know. Anybody? OK, well, just say you're in Hubert's Math 110 course if you don't know the section. And tell them what the problem is, OK? Say, uh, I'm having trouble with my password. I used my T number. I sent the forgot password, and I haven't received an email back. Please help, OK? That's and that's and then, and then go from there on the password, because if those things don't help you right there, then I don't know what's going to help you. Uh, you'll just have to write me an email and say, I still can't get in. Now we're only talking. I've got 30 students pretty much in each class, so that's 160 students. We're talking about 10 students. Uh, about 10 students have emailed, or less than 10 students have emailed me with problems the second week of class. This should have been taken care of the first week of class, but I'm not going to fuss. I'm just saying it should have been taken care of. The second picture, if I can get it pulled up, what happens after I log in and I don't see anything? Well, First of all, Blackboard could be the problem. I have found that when students go through Blackboard, they have more problems than they have less problems. OK, let's see if somebody. Thank you, Mr. Lynch, 11009. OK, so make sure you tell them 11009. Thank you, sir. You're a good man. You're a winner. 
So if you if you log in, if you get your password and you log in, let's say you log in and the screen is white and all you see is my labs plus at the top, then you you got a you got a search engine problem. Or you have the red box problem. One of these two. Make sure you use Google Chrome or Firefox. I alternate. When I'm at home, sometimes I pull up Google, sometimes I pull up Firefox. I do it, I do it alternating. Okay. The red X or the red box you need to look for. Where is the red X or the red box? It's usually in your address bar right beside that star right here. Right click on it and hold on. Where's my picture? Where did it go? Oh well, I'll just pull it up again. Right click on that red box or that red X and just allow. Now, why should I allow cookies? Why should I allow unsafe? Why should I allow pop-ups? Because you have within My Labs Plus, you have stuff popping up, coming up like the e-text or the homework or the, that's like a pop-up. And it needs those unsafe scripts and pop-ups and cookies to work those internal applications. So that's why you have to allow that. And if you're getting that red box or that red X, that means that it needs to be checked. Okay. Try another computer. We have noticed that most of the problems, it goes with Blackboard, and then we also know that a lot of problems come from Macs. Now, I have some students that tell me they use their Mac and didn't have a single problem. But then I have a lot of students, like I say, those nine or 10 students, and the world is just collapsing in on top of them. Try another computer. I tell students to try one of the labs. Now, I know that some of y'all are all over the place. Um, who's, who's in Oklahoma? Didn't somebody in Oklahoma? I can't remember, it must be another class. But I have one student in Oklahoma because he's not coming back until September the 11th. So anyway, try another computer. And also, if you've noticed that you're using Blackboard and you're having problems, then don't use Blackboard. Okay, use Teams. I put that link in Teams, it's at the top where it says one other, click on that arrow and you'll see T uh, My Labs Plus. Or you can go to tctcmylabsplus.com. Now, I'm going to open up. Anybody got any input on any of these problems? Can you add anything to what I've said? Or anybody have a different problem that you found a solution to? Anybody? So nobody had any problems. Okay. Try another internet connection, too. Okay, to explain. Go ahead. Explain. Mr. Maloda, Maloda, yes. explain yes. that, please. So I've we've been having internet problems in my house because we live in the middle of nowhere, and our internet has to get through like hotspot. So um, like sometimes I'll submit a, I'll submit an answer, but then the page will become unresponsive and then I'll have to refresh it. So I found like going on a more stable internet connection is also a good, you know. Good, thank you. Where do you live, Mr. Malata? Uh, like right outside of Charleston, like in like oh, yeah. 30 I minutes outside of Charleston. That okay, that's good, good. Thank you for sharing that. And um, I'm having internet problems with my internet right now. I had to call AT&T and they're having to come out Monday because my output is slower than my input and they say a wire must be broken or something because my my input is fine my output is like 0.1 and it's supposed to be like seven 
and they they're saying that I'm having problems, so they're coming out Monday. So you got to check this stuff. Uh, Windows May 2020 update also broke a lot of people's internet. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, that might be a driver issue. We got some good tech people in here. I like this class. We got tech people in here. All right. Any other questions? All right. Now, you may see a little bit of change in my schedule after September 8th. And I want you to write this down, please. After September 8th, my son will be doing virtual learning at my house. So I will be calling from home. Okay. I'll be. And that's why I made sure that my internet was right. After September 8th or September 8th and afterwards, I'm going to be conducting class from home. Okay, so I need y'all to write that in your notebook so you'll remember. Remember, September 7th is Labor Day. The college is closed, so that means we do not have classes. So make sure you write that down also. Okay? All right, so that's a little bit about the problems that people are having. What you do not do, this is what you do not do. I am very lenient, okay? I am not your, I don't lock the door at eight o'clock because students are late. I don't do that kind of stuff. If you have a problem, just let me know. But do not go hammy on me, okay? Don't be hammy the squirrel, okay? Some of y'all don't know who hammy the squirrel is. Come on now. Y'all don't know who Hammy the Squirrel is? I'm an old guy and I know who Hammy is. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you who Hammy is in case y'all don't know, because if I say anything else and people get offended, I don't know why people get offended, but anyway. Just chill. All right, here it is. Hammy the Squirrel. Friday people. There's Hammy. Okay. Hammy goes crazy. Okay. Some of y'all go crazy. Okay. Please don't go crazy. All right. Chill. You know, I got vodka and orange juice. No, I don't. I'm kidding. I got fruit juice. But y'all need to take a drink of water or something. Okay. Chill. If you have a problem, email me, let me know, and we will work around it, okay? Hopefully you'll see, I don't know what rate my professor says, but it should say that I'm either lenient or I'm fair or I'm, you know, easy to work with. It should say that because I don't think I've said, well, no, I'm not going to help you. You're going to fail and you're stupid. I don't think I say that to students, okay? So please, just work with me. All right, so there's Hammy. Hey, Hammy. Bye, Hammy. All right, so we're going to work on, somebody tell me or type it in, what was the last thing we went over? Because I remember us going over and say, I get y'all mixed up with the 109. I was going over, I was starting vertical and horizontal shifts, but I don't think I did that with y'all. I think I just finished uh going over uh domain and range i think somebody help me out what was the last things we covered in your notebooks that means i want somebody to say something or type something in uh i want y'all to interact you know the review when we started the 1.2 we started talking about functions okay graphing did i cover domain and range Okay. Yeah, you, you briefly went over it, but yeah. Okay. So I basically covered 1.2. All right. Uh, so graphs and basic functions, I've covered that. Graphs of basic functions, that's your parent graphs. That's those seven, uh, let's see, five or six or seven graphs that I showed you. Now, symmetry, we actually talked about symmetry, odd or even. Odd. It is symmetrical around the origin, O and O. Even is symmetrical around the y-axis, 
Okay, we talked about that. So what I'm going to talk about now is this, vertical and horizontal shifts. And what I want everybody to do is let's take our handy dandy, let's get out a piece of graph paper if you got one. If you don't have a piece of graph paper, I want you to get a straight edge and I want you to make a big graph on your whole sheet of paper. I'm fixing to do that right now. And I want you to get some colored pencils and or highlighters because we're going to use different colors. Okay, so everybody be doing that while I get the board ready. And I did hit record and you do see my board, so I want to make sure that's and I'm going to bring in a background of graph paper. And I'm going to hit my handy dandy line maker. And mine is landscape, but yours would probably be portrait since you're, you, you can turn yours however you want to. Just make the whole page a graph. That's what it should look like. And if you want to, if you want to label it, go ahead and label it one, two, three, four, five. I'll give you a second to do that. I want it to be accurate because this is going to explain to you vertical, horizontal shifts, orientation, and all that good stuff. So I need you to, I need you to be accurate with this, and I need you to make sure you use the right colors and everything, so everything will be together. So go ahead and finish graph, uh, drawing your graph and uh, put your hand up whenever you finish doing your graph. When I get about, when I get at least nine hands, that means that pretty much everybody's finished with their graph. So give me a hands up whenever you finish drawing your graph. Give everybody a minute. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to number my graph because I'll have too much stuff all over it. I don't want to do that, but you can do that. Okay, so far I got a couple of hands. I don't want to move on until we get at least nine hands because that way I don't want anybody to think I don't want to, you know, get ahead of anybody. Before we got five, leave them up until I tell you to. Take them down, just leave them up. Seven, eight. And nine. Okay, we got nine. That's about half the class right now that's in, that's here today. So 10, okay, good. You can take your hands down now. Now, <clears throat> what I want you to do is I want you to take your black pen or black pencil or whatever, because I'm using black as the basic model. And I want you to graph f of x is equal to x squared. I want you to do it in black. Black dots, black line, black letters, black numbers. I want you to do everything in black or gray because that's the basic model. That is your parent graph of x squared. So go ahead and do that. I'll do it with you. I'm just going to use five points. There's no sense in doing 10 points, just negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Four, one, zero, one, four. So I'm gonna do negative two, one, two, three, four. Negative one, zero, zero, one, one, and two, four. Go ahead and do three and nine. So three is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and three and nine. OK, 
Okay, so that's our parabola. And you can extend it if you want to and draw arrows on it, that's fine. There's our basic model. So now I'm going to erase my table here. And you don't, I, I don't want you to erase it. You leave it. You got more room to write than I do. Now I want to take a blue marker and you use some form of blue. And I'm going to do f of x is equal to 2x squared. Okay, go ahead and do that one. f of x is equal to 2x squared. Okay, so, sorry, my daughter is going to the shop. It's a long story. Anyway, and I had to call the shop to tell them she's on her way. Anyway, so, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 squared is 8. I mean, 4 times 2 is 8. 1, 2, 0, 8, uh, 0, 2, and 8. So negative 2, positive 8. Negative 2, positive 8. Negative 1, positive 2. 0, 0, 1, 2, and 2, 8. Let's go ahead and do a 3. Uh, 3 would be 9, that'd be what, 18? So 3 would be 18. So 1, 2, 3, and that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Somebody tell me what happened. What's the difference between the black parabola? and the blue parabola. You can type it in, you don't have to talk. I know some of y'all are shy. Oh, I ain't got the, I, ain't, I don't have the, I wish they had a chat window and an enrollment window so I could see everything. Damn Russians. Okay. It's more condensed, okay? I think you mean compressed, but I, I know what you're saying. So here, I'm gonna show arrows compressed along the x-axis, and what's happening along the y-axis? Think of a balloon. I'm compressing along the x-axis, and what am I doing along the y-axis? To get that blue to do less that to make it skinnier than the black, what do I do along the y-axis if I'm compressing along the x-axis? Starts with an S. Stretching. Stretching. And I'm stretching along the y-axis. So what does this two do? What does this two do if A is above zero? Or, I'm sorry, is if A is above one, or yeah, above one, then you compress along the x axis, and what do you do? 
stretch along the what? The wires. Like a balloon. So now I'm going to erase this. Now I want you to take a green color. And I want you to do f of x is equal to 1 half x squared. Well, since this is a denominator, I'm going to pick multiples of the denominator. Negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. Go ahead and do 8. Um, and negative 8. So we'll have another point. You don't have to. All right, go ahead and do that. And if you can't do it, just mark it up as failure. Yeah, she's got lights coming on her car, you know, the, the, the check engine light and the ABS light, and I drove the car, and I told her it was fine, but she's all spazzing, so I told her she needs to go by and see him. I don't know, are you always there? I said, okay, I'll tell him you're coming. She's been, just been going around the shop for 22 years. I don't know why she acts like it's something new. It's the Russians. All right, so negative, somebody tell me what negative eight squared is. Well, negative eight squared is 64. 64 divided by two is what? 32. Uh, which we're not gonna be able to graph it, but I just wanted to graph it. I mean, I just wanted to do the math. Negative two squared is what? Four. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Wait a minute. That's 32 goes here, sorry. And 4 is 16, that would be 8. 4 should be 8. And 2 squared is 4, that would be 2, right? Yeah. And 0 is 0. So negative four, positive eight. One, two, three, four, and eight is right there. Negative two and two, zero, zero, and two, two, and three, and let's see, four, and eight. Oh my. What's the green one doing? Well, the green one is having the opposite effect. Somebody tell me what the green one's doing. It's being stretched along the what? Along the x-axis, and it's being compressed along the y-axis. So it makes it wider. So if A, is between zero and one, meaning a proper fraction. Make sure you make sure it's proper because a mix of uh, an improper fraction is up here. The improper fraction is here. Okay. This is proper fraction. If you have a proper fraction in front of your variable, then it's going to be wider because it is stretched along the x-axis and it's compressed along the what? y-axis. So I'm going to erase this now. i got one more to show you on this one. We still got other things to do, but just on this part. 
I'm going to take my red marker. F of X is equal to negative 2X squared. Well, you don't have to do any math. All you have to do is flip the blue coordinates. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because what does a positive or negative tell us in math and science? It tells us direction. So somebody tell me in the chat, somebody tell me what A tells us. There's one word, starts with an O, that tells me that A tells us all of this stuff. Anybody know what that O word is? Think of it. O, R, I, E, N, come on. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. So A is in cash. Thank you for answering that question, even though I gave you half the word. Um, orientation is equal to A. So write that down. A gives us orientation. It tells us if it's compressed, if it's stretched, if it's wider, if it's, I don't know, narrower, if that's a word, more narrow. Um, it tells us if it's going up, which means concave up, or if it's concave what? Down. So A on a function tells us everything about the orientation. Okay? So now we're going to erase um, you don't have to erase don't erase your uh, graphs. I'm just going to erase this and that. I want to erase my little arrows here, or try to. Now, while I'm erasing stuff, I want you to draw two more graphs. We're going to do magenta. Now, of course, you can use any colors you want to. I'm just going to use magenta. And I want you to graph this problem. F of X, okay, I said magenta, hello. Oh, it says purple, but it's magenta. Oh, man. I think I might as well just quit. Okay. I'm sorry I hit the wrong button. Now, can I have magenta now? All right, F of X is equal to x squared plus 6. And then I'm going to do another color, and I'll do this one in aqua. And I want you to draw these, these two graphs. f of x is equal to x plus 4 quantity squared plus 2. All right, so go ahead and draw those two using the you know, chart plot method. I'm going to give everybody, uh, let me see what time it is right now. I'll give everybody a couple of minutes. I'll put you on the stopwatch. And the reason I'm doing this is to give you a little bit of practice, you know, with graphing. Well, I showed you, you know, the methods the other day just to refresh you. All right, two minutes to graph those two equations.
Priority one message coming in on secure channel. I think people have lost their minds. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let me see how much time we got left. We got 20 seconds left. I'll give you another 20 seconds. Priority one message coming in on secure channel. My daughter's like freaking out. I just told her to drink something. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to do the magenta over here because I'm running out of room over there. So magenta and negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Negative two squared is four. Four plus six is what? Ten. Negative one squared is one. One plus six is five. Zero plus six is six. One squared is one plus six is seven. And two squared is four plus six is 10. So zero six. I think your five at the negative one is supposed to be a seven. Okay. Thank you. I did that on purpose just to make sure y'all paying attention. There we go. And now, am I really worried? No, because I would have seen it because if you would have graphed that five, it wouldn't have worked. You'll see what I'm saying in just a second. All these parabolas are supposed to look the same. Okay, except wider or, or you know, it's about the same. So negative one, positive seven. Zero, six, uh, negative two, 10. That's seven, eight, nine, 10. And one, seven. And two, 10. Now, first of all, it looks just like the black line. Right? They look just alike. What's the difference? Somebody tell me what the difference is. The y-intercept is higher. You just did a vertical shift of how many up? You just did a vertical shift of six yeah. up. So when you have a number that's outside the square, see this is the square right here. Message coming in on secure okay. channel. This number is outside the square. If you have a function and the number is on the outside of the square or the absolute value or the log or the X cubed or whatever, then that's a vertical shift. Now, when you do the blue one, I'm gonna do the blue over here. Negative two, 
negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. 0 plus 4 is 4. 4 squared is 16 plus 2 is 18. 1, one plus 4 is 5. That's 25 plus 2 is 27. We're getting too big. So I'm going to forget 2. I'm going to go the other direction. Negative 3, negative 4. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. 1 squared is 1 plus 2 is 3. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. 0 squared is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. So I'm going to plot these points. Negative 4, positive 2. Negative 4, positive 2. Negative 3, positive 3. Negative 3, positive 3. Negative 2, positive 6. Negative 2, positive 6. Uh, I lost my point. Negative 1, positive 11. Well, that's up here somewhere. That's 8, 9, 10, 11. And I'm running out. I need to go over toward negative 4. Negative 5. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1 squared. 1 plus 2 is 3. So negative 5 is 3. Y'all see the y'all see the parabola now. Again, it's just like x squared. But what's wrong now? Well, we have a vertical shift of 2. And then we have a horizontal shift of what? 4 to the left. Now, you need to make a note of this, and I'm going to write this in red. This is very important. This is always the opposite. When you're talking about a horizontal shift, if you have a plus 4, that means to the left. If you have a minus 4, that means to the right. Now, I don't have time to get into it right now because I think we're about out of time. We are. And paranoid people come in here after this class, so I get the hell out. Okay? Um, the, the whole point is the opposite direction. Now, what have we just gone over? We've just went over orientation, vertical, and horizontal shift. Now, that's what, what section was that on the homework? Hold on, let me get my outline. Everybody should have it in front of them, but that's okay. Vertical and horizontal shrinking, and I just went over 2.2 .2 and 2.3. But I'm not finished. That means, as far as homework goes, y'all should have, uh, y'all should be working on 1.2 and 2.1 over the weekend. If you want to work in 2.2 .2 and 2.3, that's fine, but I haven't finished it yet. So don't send too many homework questions out of 2.2 .2 and 2.3 because I'm not finished yet. Does everybody understand that? Just give me a hands up. You know, once I get four or five hands up, then I know people. Okay, good. All right. So here's your homework. 1.2, 2.1. I should have questions on those Monday. Okay? Because we, I mean, we've done that. 2.2 .2 and 2.3, you can get in there and play around, but I'm not finished yet, so don't send questions on 2.2 .2 and 2.3 yet. Okay, now I'm going to shut off the recording and stop.